One of the best things about Hogwarts Legacy is that even after hundreds of hours of game time, you can still come across hidden secrets and Easter eggs left in the game by the developers. So I'm gonna take you through 10 new ones that I didn't manage to squeeze into the last Easter egg video. And it does go without saying a polite spoiler warning here, by the way, just in case you haven't completed the game. And let's start with Sirius Black because there's multiple obscure references to him in the game. One of the most notable ones being the black wolf in the cave that overlooks Hogsmeade and the Hogwarts grounds. Now, you may not have notice that this wolf is actually called the Grim, which is the omen of death in the wizarding world. And as you'd expect, considered to be the worst omen around, it took on the form of a large black menacing spectral dog, which Harry believes he witnesses on multiple occasions in the books and films, which was wrongly prophesized by Professor Trelawney in her tea leaves, as it actually turns out to be Sirius Black in his animagus form, who was watching over Harry. In fact, we can also hear a student say this after we undertake the astronomy class quest. So give this a listen. How am I supposed to find Sirius when my hands are too cold to use a telescope? It's a dog, isn't it? Leander there, clearly referencing Sirius and his Animagus form. But the thing is, though, I did have an idea about this cave where the Grim is based, as I think it could be in reference to the very same cave Sirius hid in with Buckbeak whilst in his Animagus form after Harry told him he'd been entered into the Goblet Fire in the Tri-Wizard Tournament. But in the books, it does say that this cave overlooks Hogsmeade in the valley directly. And I think this is probably a bit too far away to be the exact cave he used to hide in. But I have no doubt it is something that the team thought about when deciding where to place the Grimm as a boss fight as they could have just placed it in some random woods. But the Goblet of Fire, while we're on that topic, is also present in this game in the trophy room at the top of the castle, by the way, which is a really cool detail if you haven't seen that yet. Now, it doesn't stop there for Sirius, though, because in The Prisoner of Azkaban, he tries to enter the Gryffindor common room to see Harry, and when he is subsequently refused entry by the fat lady, he slashes her portrait with his paws and claws. She then ends up hiding in the map of Argyle shirt on the second floor as noted by Dumbledore in the books, which we can see here in game. But of course, there is no fat lady hiding in sight in this particular painting. But if we do open up this portrait and head inside, you'll notice another painting of grassy plains with hippos, which is the very same portrait that the fat lady used in the films to hide from Sirius and not the map as noted in the books, which is a super crazy detail when you really think about it, that the developers have actually thought that much about it. I love to see it. And that is just the start because you can equip Ron Weasley's famous secondhand dress robes that he wore to the Yule Ball in the Goblet of Fire. And I think the developers have had a lot of fun in designing and bringing these robes into game as they've done a good job, in my opinion, at transferring over all the small details like the frills and old fashioned patterns, much to Ron's displeasure. In fact, there's another reason why these robes are in the game because in the Goblet of Fire on page 168, Ron initially receives these robes in the post from Mrs. Weasley at breakfast. And that's when Draco ridicules him and says, you weren't thinking of wearing these, were you? I mean, they were very fashionable in about 1890, which just so happens to be the year that this game takes place in, which is absolutely mental. So it seems, according to Draco, by wearing these robes in game, were actually very fashionable for the time period. So in that regard, to get hold of these robes, you'll need to unlock three Hogwarts secrets in your challenge menu. The first one being in the clock tower, where you need to make your way up to the battlements, casting Arresto Momentum or Glacius at the right time to open the correct doors, as well as the bridge brazers in the viaduct courtyard, where you need to cast Confringo to unlock the chamber below the bridge. And finally, the Book of Admittance room which is above the trophy room in the castle where you need to pick up the key to unlock the door which is in the headmaster's office. Now once you've discovered all these secrets you'll unlock Ron's dress robes in game and fun fact for you here when Harry won the Triwizard Cup in the books he gave his 1000 galleon winnings to Fred and George Weasley to open up their joke shop only on the basis that they bought Ron some new dress robes which he can be seen wearing a few years later at Bill and Fleur's wedding so that's why he's not seen wearing them again in the series or they're kind of ever mentioned ever again. But that's not the only Ron Weasley Easter egg though, because if you head to the hospital wing in game, you may come across a student throwing up slugs, which is a reference to when Ron attempted to curse Draco Malfoy with the slug vomiting charm in the Chamber of Secrets whilst utilizing his broken wand, which of course that backfired and Ron was left throwing up slugs until it stopped. So a nice little nod to him there. But run aside, there is a fantastic Harry Potter Easter egg located at the Great Lake in the Forbidden Forest, which is located here on your map. And when you do arrive, your character will mention the following. Something oddly solemn about this place. 
such frugal creatures, stags. Which is a great subtle reference to when Harry cast the Patronus charm towards the Dementors at this very lake in the Prisoner of Azkaban books and films whilst attempting to defend himself, Hermione and Sirius Black. Now Harry's Patronus, of course, takes the form of a stag, which is the creature that his father's Animagus form took and why this lake is subsequently surrounded by stags whenever you arrive in game. And while we're on Harry Potter references, if you head to this location on the map, which happens to be one of the treasure hunt maps that you can complete in game, you'll have to hit the bells in the correct order with each bell making a distinctively different sound. Now this sound ends up being the song or motive that's called Hedwig's Theme, which is best known for being the main theme for every Harry Potter film. So take a listen to this in game. And another interesting bit of info about this theme, Warner Bros director Chris Columbus initially asked the composer John Williams to whip up a few promotional musical stingers for the film and not the actual score. But when the producers heard what he had created, they decided that this tune was perfect for the series. Now the achievement for completing this treasure map is called Solved by the Bell, which perhaps is in a reference to the famous TV show Saved by the Bell. And I'm probably reaching quite far there, but I do remember watching that on Nickelodeon back in the day when I got in from school. Now, whilst we're talking about modern day characters and references in this game, there is a quest in Hogsmeade, which you may have already completed actually, which is given to you by Sakarissa Tugwood, who asks you to fetch some Boobatuba pus from the Forbidden Forest as she wants to try and use it in some of her cosmetic potions. Well, Sakarissa is an already established character in the Wizarding World universe, as in the Chamber of Secrets game released back in 2002, there is a chocolate frog card with her on it, as she was a pioneer of inventing beauty potions one of them being the acne curing potion which contained boobatuba pus. So I reckon we've helped invent that in game with that quest. So I have no doubt that royalty checks will be inbound, I'm sure. Now, if you're enjoying the video so far, please do leave a very swift like down below. It genuinely really helps me out on YouTube. So thank you very much. And a big thank you to the channel's first ever sponsor, NordVPN, who slid into my DMs and said, hey, Andy, can we sponsor your video? And I said, Absolutely, because I've been a paying customer of Nord before I even started making YouTube videos a couple years ago. I think they've got a solid bit of kit here, which I use daily, and they've even got a better deal that I'm gonna run you through in just a moment. Because if you're not using a VPN online right now, what are you doing, you silly goose? You need to be doing so, because it keeps all of your data secure and encrypted, and it allows you to browse the internet completely anonymously. Now, one of the best things I like about Nord is that they have 5,000 plus servers so you could teleport yourself around the globe depending upon where you want to go. Which means if you live outside the UK and you want to watch some quality British television, and I don't blame you by the way, you can now do so. All you need to do is whip up Nord, apparate yourself to London, and when you do arrive in the British Isles, it'll be a milk, no sugar. Thank you very much. So if you sign up using the nordvpn.com forward slash Andy Reloads link. You'll get four months free on a two year plan. You'll also get a hefty discount depending upon where you are in the world. And they're also offering you a 30 day money back guarantee. So no bamboozles here. I genuinely recommend it. I definitely think it's worth a perusal from yourself. And big thanks to Nord for sponsoring the video as it helps me get closer to making content for you full time. Now let's talk about this giant squid because you may already be aware that you can trigger one of its tentacles hitting the slithering common room window by casting a few basic spell shots at them to then get its attention. It also appears in the flying class quest, but you can trigger it in the game generally by hanging about in the Black Lake in the daytime. And it is completely random by the way, but it will happen if you do linger around long enough. There's also a giant squid mural you'll encounter by completing the jackdaw quest in game, where you'll need to place a slice of toast on the stone pillar, which the squid then ends up munching and subsequently granting you access to the actual room that it's guarding. Now, this may seem a little bit odd, but it is a nod to when Harry was down at the Black Lake after breakfast in chapter 18 of the Goblet of Fire, where he threw his unwanted toast into the water before heading back up to the castle, which is when the giant squid popped up and then ate it himself. So a really nice Easter egg from the devs there. Now, if you do head to this location on your map, you'll also come across a cave where you'll find a body and a letter. Now, in that letter specifically, it informs us that this person is under investigation for trying to breed basilisks, which are born by placing a chicken egg underneath the toad for long enough that it eventually hatches, which is why you can see chickens walking around on what looks to be 
a hatched egg. Incidentally, when looking at a basilisk directly in the eye, it causes instant death. So perhaps that's what's happened here. Either way, Castile JA posted this on Twitter recently, where he recorded what seemed to be a very large snake slithering down the passageway of the female dormitories in the Slytherin common room. Now, I spent hours waiting around in the Slytherin common room trying to get this to trigger with no luck, but another user did by the name of Jester, who posted an update about it, showing that it looks like a giant squid animation bug. But I'll be honest, I'm not so sure. This seems way too intentional to me. It may be a bug, but it certainly looks like a basilisk in the Slytherin common room. But hey, pretty cool nonetheless. But that said, spiders were terrified of basilisks and recognized them as their enemy, including acromantulas, which are suspected of being wizard-bred spiders that originate from Southeast Asia. The most famous one perhaps being Aragog, who was acquired and partially raised by Hagrid in the 1940s, subsequently going on to create a colony in the Forbidden Forest. And it's no secret that this game takes place 50 or so years before Aragog arrives, but one of the quests that you obtain in game is to defeat the large Acromantula spider Absconder, and after you do, her bio card notes that she's the first Acromantula to be brought to the Forbidden Forest and may have left eggs somewhere, which perhaps nods to an already established colony in the forest before Aragog comes along. So quite keen to hear your thoughts on that one. Now, as for dragons, we of course rescue the Hebridean black dragon that is native to the British Isles in our side story quest line with Hufflepuff's Poppy. And as soon as that dragon is released, you'll be able to encounter it as it flies across your map. In fact, it will swoop down and steal cattle if you hang about during the day around this particular point on your map, which I think is a nice reference to Game of Thrones when Drogon swoops down, picks up a goat and flies off into the highlands. But there's also another random event you can trigger with this dragon, which is at the Black Lake where it will swoop down and take a drink of water, which I think is another nice reference to when Harry, Ron and Hermione escape Gringotts on the back of a dragon in the Deathly Hallows with the dragon eventually heading down to take a drink of water by a lake, which is when the trio managed to jump off it. Now, lots more dragon details in this game though, because if you do head out into the Hogwarts grounds, specifically to this location on your map around the back of the herbology greenhouses, you'll come across a hedge that has been shaped into a dragon that will breathe yellow and orange leaves if you get too close to it, which is a nice detail, as well as in the stone mural in the central hall within the castle itself, which if you wait long enough, a wizard will sneak over to the dragon and tickle it, which is a reference to the Hogwarts motto, never tickle a sleeping dragon, which again, I think is another fantastic detail. And the same could be said about the paintings, tapestries, and portraits that are included in this game, with one of my favorites being Barnabas the Barmy, who was a wizard who made an attempt to try and train trolls for the ballet, try and say that three times, which you can see depicted here on the wall opposite the entrance to the Room of Requirement. In fact, Warner Bros originally planned to include this in the films, going as far as making the troll costumes and rehearsing all the dance moves, but unfortunately it got cut from the film. But close by this painting, I do want to bring your attention to an Easter egg mentioned by Chandler Wood and Andrew, the community team at Avalanche, in their recent official stream on Twitch. At one hour, 14 minutes in, Chandler says this. It's a, it's a deep cut reference, so if anybody gets it, um, and it's let not, me know. <laughs> not entirely uh, time period time period specific but yeah it, but it's it's definitely just a a nod it's a nod yeah to um something from the harry potter books but uh yeah interesting little little fun easter egg there and i think he's referencing when harry meets professor trelawney near the room of requirement in the half blood prince where he learns that she's been hiding bottles of alcohol or sherry in the room of requirement before being thrown out by malfoy and i also just want to say that i met both of these dudes in real life when they invited me to play hogwarts legacy early in january and they are great people so i'm very much looking forward to them sharing more obscure easter eggs in future streams now as for paintings and tapestries though there is a couple cool inclusions from the team such as the werewolf tapestry located near the transfiguration fast travel point where if you follow this route Nika's taking now you'll reach the room and if you light lumos at each tapestry they will subsequently change and tell a story of a mother who was a werewolf and was hunted by her husband and not was initially depicted on the original tapestries before casting lumos there's also a medusa portrait which is located not far from the potions classroom flu powder point where you can turn into stone upon interacting with 
the portrait of Medusa. Medusa, of course, being a Gorgon, which is a real magical creature in the Wizarding World that turned anyone who looked at them into stone, which is why perhaps the painter turns into stone in the portrait when you actually interact with it, as well as the whole room also being filled with stone statues. So a nice play on lore there from the team. But speaking of castle details, you can experience a ghost death day party if you follow this route I'm taking right now after starting from the viaduct flu powder fast travel point. Now, a death day party is the celebration thrown by ghosts on the anniversary of the day that they died, if you weren't aware, by the way. And after taking this route, you will arrive at this cage door, which you will be able to unlock if you approach it closely enough and then look up. Now, once that's busted open, you'll be able to head down the corridor into the party and start having a good time. But while you're here, you may notice that there's some classical music playing in the background, as well as when you come across different instruments in the game, which are real musical scores composed by Mozart, Bach, and Beethoven, as their classical works are in the public domain, so the studio can use their compositions, which is pretty cool. Now, while we're on the topic of music, on your travels throughout the game, you may have come across the traveling musician, Ernie Lark, who initially plays to a very small audience with just one instrument. Well, if you tip him some galleons, every time you see him he'll add a new instrument to his orchestra and the crowd will continue to grow each time you tip him with the limit being six times and then you'll hear the crowd compliment him on his performance comparatively to when they berate him when he's first starting out. Now, there's actually a lot of interesting references hidden in plain sight in Professor Weasley's Transfiguration classroom. The first being the several life-size chess pieces that is a homage to Professor McGonagall, who famously bewitched the chess game in the Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone, if you're stateside. In fact, even though you can't play Wizard's Chess in game, you can conjure a chessboard in your room of requirement when you obtain the schematic, which then plays the real-life chess move called a Fool's Mate, which is the fastest possible way to beat someone else at chess. But there's also this top hat in the classroom, which has bunny ears, which may be a nice nod to Alice in Wonderland and the Mad Hatter, but I think it's a Wizarding World Easter egg left by the developers in reference to the Prisoner of Azkaban book, where the trio entered the magical menagerie shop in Diagon Alley, where they saw a rabbit freely transform into a top hat when it wanted. In fact, if you use the transfiguration spell on a rabbit or bunny in the wild, it literally turns into this hat, as well as other animals turning into different objects as well. And if you continue continually transfigure them, they will eventually turn into bags of gold, which isn't a profitable way to earn money in the game, but it is still good fun. Now, unfortunately, Robbie Coltrane, who played Hagrid in the films, passed away late last year, but the developers did place a small memorial by the groundskeeper's hut in the game, which is framed with a hippogriff, which I also think may be a nice homage to Buckbeak, who was sentenced to die by the Ministry in the Prisoner of Azkaban, but famously escaped thanks to the help of Harry and Hermione. Now, inside the groundskeeper's hut, the film guide page also mentions that the tools and furnishings make for a hut no matter how large the person is living in there. Hagrid of course being half giant and his future home so uh, another nice nod to him there but on top of all this there's a Hagrid motorbike adventure easter egg in game where if you travel to this point in the map you'll notice that all the architecture in game is the same as the Universal Studios tour ride in Orlando and I actually believe Chandler Wood the community manager teased this back in a Wizarding World video in October so definitely worth checking out for yourself in game if you have experienced the ride in person but while we're outside Hogwarts when you head back into Hogsmeade make sure you head over to the paper stand in the main square opposite Honeydukes because the Daily Prophet newspaper will change headline stories as you progress through the game with one of the issues being a story covering the breeding between a dragon and a chicken which is a nice nod to when Harry went with Mr Weasley for his hearing in the Order of the Phoenix after coming across a fire-breathing chicken in the elevator and the fact that the dev team went to this much detail is actually insane to be honest with you but let's head back to that room of requirement because when you first enter it with Professor Weasley you'll come across a cabinet of interest that can be located if you peer through this particular gap as you make your way through the room. Now this isn't just any ordinary cabinet this is in fact a vanishing cabinet which acts as a passageway between two places so if an object has been placed in one it would then appear in the other and that's exactly what Draco spends his whole school year trying to do in the Half-Blood Prince, repair this vanishing cabinet in the room of requirement, which would then link 
link up with the other vanishing cabinet that's located in Borgen and Burks in Nocturne Alley. Now, Draco, of course, goes on to succeed in his endeavor with the Death Eaters subsequently arriving in Hogwarts, which brings me on to another very subtle reference. And thanks to Sparkle in our Discord for the heads up on this one, because if I just zoom into Bellatrix Lestrange's necklace here, you may notice that she's wearing a bird skull, which just happens to be the same mask which you can equip in game. And speaking of dark witches and wizards, while you're sneaking through the restricted section with Seb early in the game, he will say this. Secrets of the darkest arts. I'm impressed. Now, this book he's referencing is the very same book that Tom Riddle, who went on to become Lord Voldemort, learned how to create a Horcrux with and move towards immortality, as this is the only book in the Wizarding World that we know of with real-world instructions on how to create a Horcrux. Dumbledore ended up removing this book from the library when he became headmaster and stored it in his office until 1997, which is when Hermione cast the Accio spell on this book before leaving Hogwarts with Harry and Ron, which was successful, and then by utilizing this book, it helped them gain more knowledge on how to locate and destroy Voldemort's Horcruxes. So for such a small in-game reference from Seb, this book actually ends up going on to shape the whole Wizarding World story that we know of, so it's a super cool inclusion from the developers here. Now I've got even more Easter eggs and secrets in Hogwarts Legacy to show you, so click the video on your screen right now and I'll see you there in just a second. But if you're still here, my huge thank you to my co-content creator Nika, as well as Dennis, Donut, James, Iron Knight and Nico, who have helped with footage and research for the video. Butterbeer is on all of them and I'll see you in that next video.